Hi everybody, welcome back. I'm going to do a Tuesday tutorial for you on how to use Kaizena. Kaizena is an add-on for Google Docs that allows you to leave voice comments for your students and for your students to leave voice comments for you. In addition, it allows you to track skills that they're learning and to save lessons and comments to use again in the future. It's really sped up my grading and I'm really excited to let you know how I use it, why I love it, and show you exactly how to implement it in your classroom as well. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and go through it with you now. This is Kaizena and you can do a couple of different things. You can set up groups and make your classes if you want to, and I have done that in the past, but currently I just have my students sign up and I can still use it with them without being in a group. But what I wanna really show you is starting with the lessons because I do think that this is probably where I would advise most people to start. So if you click on lessons, you'll see that you could actually search lessons to begin with. So you can see that they have different ones, about grammar and things like that where they'll have the comment typed. So this one on passive voice has a typed example and then it also has a YouTube video. I'll show you when you are leaving comments you could just pick the passive voice one and this will go in automatically. So it's nice that they have some of those already created. I also create my lessons and so I'll show you what I've created pretty recently. I told my students that they needed to leave me three comments where they are asking specific questions for me to give feedback on. So they could ask me about their thesis statement or their concluding paragraph. They could ask me to look at how they formatted their dialogue. Now in some people's papers, as I started to give feedback, I realized there weren't any comments. Once I saw two papers that had that, I came here to create a lesson, basically create, save a comment that said no comments. I still recorded myself talking because I think leaving verbal feedback is one way that you allow students to connect with you. And I've had students tell me that they like it compared to when I've either typed or handwritten things because they always read it to themselves with like an attitude or a tone and they think I'm mad at them, but they can hear my vocal tone in these audio recordings. I'll play it for you. I don't see or hear any comments from you asking for specific feedback. Now, every time I see that there's a paper without any comments, I just go ahead and put that. And then for those papers, I just use my saved comments and don't give more specific feedback. So they're writing a definition essay. I saw that a lot of people were forgetting to like mark off the word that they were defining either in quotation marks or italics. So that's what this comment is. I also put in like the positive thing. So if I think they have a good explanation, I'll use that. Introducing quotes. I can point out title format, dialogue, periods and quotation marks, MLA. So for MLA, um, this one, you can see I created it five years ago. So I've been using this for a while, but it takes them to a YouTube video that shows them how to set up a paper in MLA format, but it also has a comment from me. The MLA formatting is not correct here on your paper so far. I'll show you how I use that in papers. The other thing that I wanted to show you is skills. I'm still not sure that I use it in the best ways and I'm probably not going to use it this semester, but because some skills we're practicing throughout the semester, I've tried to mark some of those down. You rate them on a skill level and it can kind of create like a rubric for you within the document and it can also track how they're doing over time so they can see that, you know, on the first paper of the semester, they maybe were scoring low on knowing when to quote and when to paraphrase or their MLA format. And then by the last paper of the semester, maybe they'll see that they're at a level four. So I think there's some different things you could do with this. These are all ones that you create. So whatever types of things you wanna use for this could work. You could make them very specific to one paper or you could make them um, things that are more generic that apply to a lot of different characters. And you can edit the levels if you want to. So you can tell them what each level means. I didn't go into that level of detail when I was playing with it, but I definitely think that I will if I use it in the future. This is a draft of an old 
paper that I wrote a long time ago. I want to use it to show you how I would do this. So let's pretend this was actually a paper that my students had created. So in add-ons, you will have added Kaizena. If you don't have it, you do it by clicking get add-ons. But I go to Kaizena and I hit open Kaizena. And it will pop up on the right hand side here and it doesn't have anything right now but you can see that it already gives you options for a voice message tracking one of those skills attaching a lesson or typing a text message so a regular comment i don't have it in full mla format i usually just highlight at the beginning if it's an mla thing and i have a lesson so i'm going to click attach lesson mla formats right there you can preview it if you want to remember what it was click select and I'm going to post this. Now my student will hear my whole thing. And I'm going to play the whole thing for you right now because I want to show you one of the ways that I use these comments. The MLA formatting is not correct here on your paper so far. Please see the link below to make the proper corrections. Once you've made those corrections, please add a comment here to tell me which things you found needed to be corrected. Thanks. So one of the things I've always struggled with my students is having them actually go and do the revisions that I've suggested. So in a lot of my comments, I ask them to make sure that they come back and tell me what they fixed or what they changed. I'm going to put according to one scholar. Let's pretend that's a good way to introduce a quote. I think it could be better. All right, we'll go to lesson. Great introducing of quote. You can search your lessons that way. I'm going to select that. It's a six second thing and I'm going to click. And I'm going to keep going through, and I know the main things that I'm looking for. I'm going to add in my lessons. By doing that, in addition to responding to whatever comments my students asked, I'm able to give a lot of feedback relatively quickly. It's the real time of me reading this and then just going through. And then what I will often do is at the very end, I will record, and it's super easy, you just click voice message, I will just record some general comments. So overall, I think this paper is looking great. It's slightly too short. So one way that you could think about expanding that is adding more analysis after each of your quotes and your paraphrases. Please make sure to let me know if any of my comments or suggestions were confusing to you, and I look forward to seeing how you revise and edit this paper. Have a good day. That's where I could just throw in something extra. I often like to use the student's name in that comment and in some of the other comments to lend that personality. I will be able to, depending on the length of the paper, spend maybe five to seven minutes reading and commenting on a paper, but have left something like three minutes worth of comments, depending on how detailed I get and how many lessons I use. They're getting more bang for my buck or my time. And I think this is a great way, especially in online classes or asynchronous online classes, to still have that connection to almost like conference with your students. So they can go and when they are at these comments, they can respond to them. They have all of these features. I don't think they have the lessons, but they have the voice message or the text. So they can also highlight and leave feedback for you. You can see exactly where they were responding to. You can also do some color coding. So if you want to color code the different types of comments you leave, I know some people like to do that. You can do that as well. And if you're going through a lot of people's papers, if you click this little pin right here, it will make it so Kaizeno will open up every time you're opening up a Google Doc. So when I'm doing a lot, I'll do that. In a nutshell, that is Kaizena, and it is one of the ways that I manage my grading load. Grading a lot of papers can take a lot of time. It can be very labor intensive, and I really find this more enjoyable. I tend to do it more quickly. And the more years that I've done it, the more lessons I've built up. And so it becomes faster and faster as I go on. Sometimes I have recorded or saved two versions of comments so that if I'm commenting on MLA format, my students aren't getting the exact same comment every time or the exact same resource. It's a really cool tool. It's free. I think there is a pro version. I have not looked into that. I'm not sure what it offers. At this point, this is enough for me. This is what I like. I really would love to hear how you plan on using it and then if you have used it, what you liked most about it. Now that you know how to use it, a few other ways that I think it could be 
um, used is in things like foreign languages where you want to hear students pronounce things so they could type out the answer and then they could read it to you so you could check their pronunciation. It could be done in a math class where you want them to explain their thinking for you and the work that they did. Um, and it can also be used for peer editing and having students talk back and forth with each other. So I hope that these give you some great ideas that you like the idea of Kaizena and I'd love to know if you try it. So let me know in the comments and I'll see you next time.